hey guys, welcome back to another Minecraft YouTuber inspired video. As you can probably tell from that intro, the inspiration for this video comes from DocM77. Specifically, this video. I highly recommend you go watch it after this if you have not already. But the main point of that was he built an amazing elevator in vanilla Minecraft. Without any mods or anything like that. That is what inspired me to try to build an elevator for this video. However, Doc had help from two of the best piston door designers in the redstone community to build his. I neither have the connections nor the redstone knowledge to build something like that in vanilla Minecraft. I am going to use the Create Above and Beyond mod pack so I can have something that actually stands a chance of working by the end of the video. But that's enough for the intro, so let's dive in and get building. First thing we need is we need an actual elevator to attempt to be able to make elevate. I'm thinking... Probably like that for the inside. But there's something that we gotta do first here, I think. Gotta place that down. Put that there, and... Yep, that allows us to stick these together like that. That also means that, crucially, this actually needs to be the actual size footprint that we want here. Because otherwise, otherwise it's not actually going to be stuck together. Probably want to do some kind of light source on the ceiling as well. Let's uh, see if we can grab that. There we go, that takes care of that. The doors will be here. And they're gonna be controlled by redstone, of course. And the create mod pistons and those various things. Yeah, let's not glue that to the elevator. This is the ground in front, so just place those back. This is going to be our elevator, ultimately, here. Now, maybe I want to actually bulk up the sides a little bit. It's kind of more for cosmetic than anything. Let's do that. Now it actually looks like an elevator, anyways. What we're actually going to use to make this thing go up and down is this rope pulley. To build up a little bit. If we just go... And then the pulley can go there. So we need to get the elevation part down and then we'll figure out the doors and everything else. First off, we need to make sure that we've actually got this stopping at the right place. To do that, let's just get a uh, hand crank here. Crank that down all the way. See, where is it gonna hit the top of the elevator? It's gonna hit it like here. So if we put glue there, hopefully it'll stick. Yeah, it looks like it has pulled the elevator up. Or it is pulling the elevator up. And then it stops right at the exact height we wanted it to stop at. 
it uh, oh sorry viewers that we uh, have that kind of situation there. Um, I want to fix that. Okay, so this will indeed work. We need to actually hook it up to some other stuff, though. Mainly we need to hook this up to something that will cause it to crank in the different directions automatically. Let's see how I can do that. This is the thing that lets us... ...do that. Okay, so that allows us to reverse the rotation. Which is good, that's what we want. Then we need this. So, we plug that to there. We take the glue out of our hand so that we stop gluing everything together. Put that there. Which appears to be cranking it the wrong way. And then for the call button, we need... This. So we put that on there. Put a light in that frequency. There we go down here. Set that up. Link set to that. And then since this is actually going to be receiving... Oh. Now let's try this out. If I grab a button, I think this might... This is probably not gonna work, actually. At least not right now, but... We'll try it with... Yeah, that didn't seem to do anything. I think we gotta go ahead and wire up some more redstone than that up here. Okay, I believe we need one of these. And then one of these. Right click with that with a wrench. We need to grab one of these again and set the frequency. Now if we hit this. It still didn't do anything. Okay, the problem was with the lanterns we were using, so... I had to switch to these. Those other lanterns didn't like to be pushed. I think is what the deal was. So let's try that again. We put that on there and then we go down and hit the button. It starts descending down. Rather slowly. For the sake of our testing here, let me speed this motor up, actually. Yep, goes all the way down. If we get in the elevator and hit the button. Then we get to ride it all the way up like this. Well, that's definitely pretty cool. 
And then it gets all the way up there, and, uh, let's just go ahead and build out a little floor here. Now then, Pearl, I need to try to figure out some sort of doors for this thing, I think. Might use, like, regular redstone mechanics for that, actually. Or maybe not. I'd like these doors to actually be attached to the elevator, if possible. Okay, so I couldn't get the doors to actually be mounted on the elevator. That just didn't seem possible to me. Or it was going to take a lot more skill than I had to do that. So I've got this set up here now. And I'm about to test it kind of for the first time as well, actually. So I can actually just flip this manually to have it start descending. Yeah, that closes the door is there. And then it descends down. And then it'll lock into place there and I can have the same door system there. So I guess I'll go ahead and build a copy of this. And I'm using these redstone contacts to power it, by the way. I attach two to either side of the elevator so that it can power this system here. It just causes these doors to extend. And these glass panes really do look like elevator doors. And I might want to change these into full blocks. Because there is a full block version of this too. So, i have that go down. So if I get in the elevator and hit the button, only one of those works. Uh, what? Oh. Uh, there. Let's try that again. So if we push the button to call the elevator, it'll come all the way down. And then that opens, and if we hit the button here, that closes and we go up. And there's going to be solid glass blocks here in front of us. And then we get there and the door is open and we can come out. I've got it kind of a bit better built now. i got it a bit more enclosed. And if I hit this button inside, we can ride it down. Got the glass in front there. And when we get to the bottom here. It opens up like you've seen before. And the way I've done that is I've just had it so that these are lined up with where that button is. That way when it gets pushed, it sends the signal to the top to cause it to do that. The next thing to figure out is a way to make this thing just stop moving part way up so that we can add another floor. Ah, uh, yeah, there we go. The clutch. That's what I need. So I need to actually disconnect this for a moment and I need to put a clutch there. Now I need to figure out how to turn that clutch on when it's at a specific height. Is it going to be as simple as just having it make contact with that and then stop? And then how do I make it so that when the buttons hit again, it starts moving again into the next floor? Hmm. First of all, we need to see if this thing even turns on on the way up. <laughs> Good, so that does send a signal, which means I can use that to actually detect it going by and send a signal onto this thing. So I think I need yet another type of switch from here. 
should be power the latch, I think. Yeah, like that. If I take one of these, run it like that, I guess run it like that. And then I grab this. I do that. Now I can unpower it by tapping the button. So when I do that, that sends another signal up to this. Now the question is, is it going to stop at that spot when I have it go down again? It does not. What if it goes up like this, though? Oh. Well, that disabled it, because that's not gonna get a signal from there anymore. But if I actually were to use this the way that I'm intending to, that goes down and that locks. This is open because it's doors. Let's test it here. And if I hit that, It goes down further and causes that to open. And then if I send it back up, it should again stop here. Or not, because it's already been switched. Okay, this isn't working. Okay, good. That does actually delay it. But now is it going to be too delayed so that it just speeds past this on the way back up? Oh, no. That's not a delay there. Now the question is, if I hit this button, does it continue going? Woohoo! I think we figured that out. Good. So this just needed a little bit of delay, and we needed to have this directly run into there. Because it perpetually gives a signal as long as that's docked here. Until the button is hit, at which point it can go back. So, let me just go ahead and install the same redstone setup here. And I believe this setup is one that you can just do for however many floors there is. I think you could probably set it for that icon each time, too. Just have it trigger the same system on whatever floor it passes. I'll send that back down there and I'll build the floor around it. And uh, I think we might be good here. So, the one thing left to test is probably the elevator call button on this. But I'm expecting it to work pretty much like the other one does. Now, of course, there's no way to actually select what floor you end up on in the elevator. But, that's probably just a limitation that I am not going to be able to solve myself here. The main thing is, if I hit this button, can I call it? Can I call the elevator from this floor? Yes, I can. And then I get in, hit the button, and go up. Like that. 
And now I do admit the one thing that would be kind of nice is that is if it uh, is smart enough to know what floor the elevator is currently on. So that if you hit the button that's already on, the call button, nothing happens. It's going to require a bit more rewiring here than I'd like to do. Now then again, maybe I should just go ahead and do that. Okay, this system's gonna have to go. I can't seem to get it working with, uh, my knowledge of redstone. I've been messing with it for a long time now. It works on this floor just fine, but this floor is wired up slightly differently. In such a way that the problem I'm running into here is that the elevator, when it's on that floor, there's really not a good way to call it down to this floor. Try disabling it up here, but then that makes it so you can't call it from the bottom. And what was happening before that was it would get to this floor and then it would reverse and go back up. Because it was getting a signal to both that system that reverses the elevator and this system it wants to which it was okay to send it through this system to turn the elevator back on and have it continue to move but it kept reversing this so that it would never actually go down to the bottom so I think I'm just gonna remove all of this and have it go back to what it was before so I did get this working. I uh, found out after I quit recording the last clip that that problem with it switching back and forth wasn't a problem with this system. That was just a general problem that I didn't catch with the whole thing. So I've redesigned it a little bit here using this pulse former from uh, Project Red. I think it's working now. And what I did to solve that is now it's actually only reversing the signal when it uh, hits either the top or the bottom. Now it still has the issue of stopping at every floor and has kind of another issue. If it's in the middle it's and you hit the call button, you might have to hit it multiple times depending on how many floors you have. Like, I guess I can demonstrate that. If I go ahead and hit the button there, that works like you would expect, and it calls it to there. But, since it still doesn't know what floor the elevator is on, and I don't have any way of uh, causing it to switch intelligently, if I hit this call button, it'll go all the way up. And then it'll stay up here until I hit the button again, at which point it'll drop down one floor. And then I have to hit it again in order for it to actually arrive at this floor. So this elevator works best if you actually ride it to the different floors rather than trying to use the call buttons. But I don't know that I really have it in me to solve that problem after I just spent a bunch of time trying to get the elevator to at least work as well as it now does. Really goes to show how impressive Doc's elevator is then. And th that was built in vanilla Minecraft and functions better than this one that I built with mods. Doesn't have some of the issues that I ran into. I suppose I might go ahead and fiddle with this a bit more off-camera. You might see this again in my modded survival if I can work out some of the uh, problems, but it's going to be at some point further in the future. But that is all the time I have for today's video, unfortunately. So let's ride this thing up to the top and do my outro here. So... If you enjoyed this video, please consider giving it a like. If you really loved it, consider subscribing. And, well, that's about it for me for today. So, my name is 
Bye-bye, good night, and so long until next time.